Good Saturday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onig with a quick check of your forecast as we go into the mid part of the weekend. It's a quiet and dry evening across the area, so we're not seeing a great deal of major problems for right now. But as we go into the course of the rest of this next week, some big changes coming on through, especially with the temperatures. We're going to be seeing a good Arctic blast as we go into Monday evening, and also that possibility of some winter weather heading our direction as we go into Monday night, Tuesday morning. This doesn't look like a huge thing, but definitely needs to be paid attention to, especially if you're planning on traveling. We'll time things out for you. We'll give you an idea as to what we're looking for coming up here in just a little bit. Welcome to everybody who's tuning in to watch the show for tonight. Glad to have you along, and again, for this evening, if you want to check out more about the forecast, if you can't stick around for all of our weather blog here, forecast in the blue bar at the bottom of your screen, scrolling along here, and you can catch the seven-day forecast right here at wreg.com slash weather. Questions, concerns, ideas, anything you want to share in the way of weather pictures, complaints, if you absolutely must, uh, you can check it out and send me an email at austin.onic at wreg.com, or you can find out more information about me via my social media pages all over the place. Drop your location and your weather reports if you got them into the comments section. We'll read off some of those as we go throughout the rest of the evening. Pardon the glasses and looking down my nose at the screen, but two-point typeface and bifocals don't work too well. Welcome to everybody who's checking in so far. We'll let a little bit more people check in and see what's going on across the Mid-South while we start off with a quick check of the forecast into tomorrow morning. Numbers, again, will not be dropping all that low. We should only be going into the mid-30s this time around for the metro area, and winds coming in from out of the southwest are going to do a good job of keeping the temperatures up. We will see the cloud cover stick around, but we've removed the chances of rainfall from the forecast as we've gone into tomorrow morning. So again, looking a little bit better tomorrow. Not much. It's still going to be a chilly start to Sunday, but hopefully a little bit more sunshine out there as we get rid of some of the cloud cover out there. Thanks a lot to everybody for joining us for tonight. Nice to see, again, uh, everybody stopping by. Scott Bullard, it's time to make an advanced run for milk sandwich. Uh, in Oakland, Tennessee. My wife used to live there, actually. Uh, if you're going to the store, I could use some more root beer, but unfortunately, it's going to be changing out there. So again, a little bit more extra root beer for the next few days. Jeff Frog Wheeler, why is winter weather so hard to predict over rainy? Because there's so many things that can go wrong or different with the forecast at the last minute. If you have very cold air dropping on down to where you have nothing but snow and warm air heads in at the surface. That could change some of that over to a rain-snow mixture. It could change it over to all rainfall. You could get warm air very high up, getting the snowfall changing to rain and then refreezing on the way down close to the surface as sleet or maybe even as freezing rainfall. It just kind of depends on the layers out there. This is something that, again, comes in handy to learn about the layers of the atmosphere. People assume that the atmosphere is the same from the ground all the way to the edge of space. There are different temperature layers. There are different amounts of moisture out there. Winds are moving in different directions. So a lot can change in a very short amount of time that can wreck a forecast very well. And if you've never tried winter weather forecasting, I highly urge you to give it a try. We'll post some links on my page so you can take a look at some of the short-range forecast models out there. But uh, Mr. Wheeler, very good question, and uh, thank you very much for asking that as well on that. Temperatures today pretty close to normal, back in the lower 50s for highs, lower 30s for low temperatures. We are ahead for the year on precipitation. Last year, we finished up about 8 to 9 inches or so above normal, if memory serves. And for today, it was dry out there, so not seeing too much in the way of rain or snow. Cool downtown tonight, kind of chilly but dry. The Mighty Lights doing their thing across I-40 on their Hernando de Soto Bridge. So a decently bright and clear evening in downtown Memphis for right now. Traffic on the almost other side of the county at I-240 and Poplar Avenue. Decently heavy for a Saturday night. Everything moving along pretty well. And seeing just a few clouds drifting on through portions of the Mid-South for the time being. Storm Tracker 3S radar, again, little if anything in the way of precipitation. We had a few snow showers across the area. We'll show you some of the weather pictures coming up that we got from that area this morning. So stay tuned for that coming up here in just a little bit. Uh, let's see, Wilson J. Renee, where is Markova? She chose not to renew her contract with News Channel 3, so she is 
uh, no longer with us. So thank you very much for asking about that. A lot of people have done so. Storm Tracker 3S a little bit farther out. We've got, again, some moisture back to the north of us around I-44. Nothing huge, but if you're heading north of Cape Girardeau, you may see some rain speckles on the windshield up around Arnold, Herculaneum, north of Rolla in that area, but not much expected there. And some sprinkles down to the west of Jackson and the Mississippi River in central and northern parts of Louisiana. Now beyond that, back to the north of that, we're seeing much colder air coming on through. And the latest round of winter weather being stirred up here is not our next storm system. That's still way up into parts of Canada. But winter storm watches and warnings have already been posted. As we go into the next couple of days, winter weather will be affecting the western Great Lakes and the north central plains area first before it drops into the mid-south. So if you're heading up to, say, north of Detroit, back over to Chicago, Minneapolis, the Twin Cities, the Dakotas, and up into northern parts of Minnesota, you may be looking at some Pretty ugly traveling conditions in about the next 24 to 36 hours there. Chilly in the Mid-South. Again, temperatures going back into and around the area of the lower 40s right now on WeatherNet 3. And once again, don't forget that you can get this information on your computer system by going to this website address, wreg.com slash weather, and clicking on the weather bug icon or uh, on the menu setting for more. Uh, on that so you can see the weather bug system out there closest to your location. All right, running the numbers into tonight, News Channel 3 at 10, moving lines on screen, that's the winds coming in from out of the southwest and temperatures back in the upper 30s with, again, a few clouds out there. The gray colors underneath those arrows moving on screen is the cloud cover, and the clouds will be kind of coming and going throughout the rest of the evening, not seeing a lot of clear skies out there. Should be seeing again that mixture of clouds plus sunshine, more sunshine at others, more clouds at other periods of time there. And temperatures into tomorrow should be back in the lower to mid 40s. Now we did have a chance of rain overnight tonight. Doesn't look like that's gonna be happening for right now. Uh, maybe some of that sprinkles up into Missouri gets as far north in the mid-south as say northwest Tennessee and the Boot Hill, but doesn't look like rain chances in the Mid-South at all for tonight. Getting enough sunshine tomorrow, we should be almost spot on normal as we get into tomorrow morning. So we see again some temperatures back in the lower to mid 30s. And then also again the possibility of getting in some very mild conditions for tomorrow. And if this isn't warm enough for you, stay tuned because we could see again some pretty mild conditions coming up for Monday as well, so stay tuned for more on that. Everybody asking questions about the snow, stay tuned. We'll talk about that coming up here uh, in just a little bit, so stay tuned. We'll get more details uh, on that one for the time being. Uh, New Bern, 47 degrees. Don Garner, thank you very much for that weather report out there. Thanks to everybody else for checking in uh, for the time frame for right now. See who else we got here. 43 in Tatumville, Tennessee. Stephen Sawyers, thank you very much uh, for that one report. And Casey Owensby, 42 in Mariana. Thank you very much uh, for checking in there. All right, timing out the storm system coming on through. A lot has changed in the last 24 hours. Again, these computer models, the closer you get to an event, the more fine-tuned they can get, the more the storm system comes into focus. And looking at just one computer model here, the extended model, which again is more of a cut large and kick into place type forecast, just giving us a generic idea of what's going on. Timing things out as we go toward the time the kids get out of school on Monday, scattered showers begin to move into the area. And that's where we see, again, the warmer conditions out there as we go toward Monday evening. Then that cold air overtakes that moisture and undercuts it so that as that moisture is way up here, cold air comes slamming in underneath it. So as that moisture goes dropping into the cold air, it changes into a rain-snow mixture as we get into Monday evening in the Mid-South, especially in Southeast Missouri and the Boot Hill. That changeover swath begins to move through the Mid-South area through about News Channel 3 at 10, Southwest Tennessee, Northwest Mississippi, and Southeastern Arkansas. And then behind that, again, we've got mainly just the white to purple conditions, the better possibility of snow showers drifting on through into late Monday evening. Rain chances first, changeover after that to rain-snow mixture, and then to all snow after that as we get into Monday evening. Now, two things about this storm system. Number one, it looks like it's picking up speed. The computer models are shoving this thing through a little faster than the last couple of days worth of computer information, so that's good news. 
Likewise, this system as it moves through is not going to pick up a lot of moisture from any ocean source. So it's bringing some with it, but it's not going to bring much outside of, of thin, fairly, again, not very impressive amount of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. So that by Tuesday morning, by the time we get News Channel 3 daybreak on the air, that should do it for the snowfall potential as we get into the early morning hours of Tuesday at this point in time for right now. Uh, Dennis Vest going to school Tuesday, sarcasm. Uh, if you knew the amount of teachers that I know across the area, including some of my wife's compatriots uh, into some of the school districts out there, that's a very serious question. So again, thank you for asking that answer at this point in time. No idea just yet, but we will be watching to see what goes on out there. Cedric Johnson, 37 in Oxford with a light breeze. Thanks for that weather report uh, for this evening. And thanks to everybody else uh, for checking in for right now. Uh, Jeffrey Griffiths, 39 degrees from your location. Thank you very much uh, for the clarification there. And welcome to everybody uh, who's checking in for Weather Overtime, our online video weather blog for tonight. Now, what about accumulation? Well, again, anything more than about 36 hours out is dicey uh, possibilities to begin with. Now, earlier today, the heaviest potential of precipitation looked like it was going to be back a little bit closer to the Mid-South. Now the computer models are starting to take the heaviest amount of precipitation and move it over into northern parts of Alabama and it looks like east of the Tennessee River. Now there still will be some accumulations here in the Mid-South area with looks like the heaviest amount going into around northern parts of Mississippi, south and along of the metro area. Now again, keep in mind, we're talking this is about 48 to 60 hours out, so a lot can change out there with temperatures, moisture amount, the speed of the system coming on through. So the closer we get, the more we'll be able to narrow in on this, and we'll be able to give you a much better idea as to what we're looking for as we go from Sunday night into Monday morning. So stay tuned for tomorrow's weather overtime coming up tomorrow night on News Channel 3. Facebook page will bring you more details on that as we get a kind of a clarification as to what's happening out there. Rest of the day tomorrow, partly cloudy skies, temperatures back in the lower 50s. Again, very nice out there, very close to normal. Early on Monday, going above normal into the mid to upper 50s. Then the showers move in as we go toward the early afternoon. Cold air slams into the mid-south as we go toward Monday evening, changing that rain to a rain-snow mixture, mixture, and then eventually over to all snow as we get into around Monday night or so. So that's where we're going to be seeing that potential for the changeover taking place. But here's the real weather story out there. The snowfall at this point in time, again, that's going to be changing in the forecast, so we'll talk more about that as we go throughout the next couple of days. Close to 60 in parts of the Mid-South as we get into around Monday afternoon early. Watch what happens as we go toward Tuesday. This is a major slam of cold air coming right on down from parts of northern Canada. And as this barrels into the Mid-South, temperatures will be some 30 degrees colder as we go into around the area of Tuesday. Not to mention the fact that as the kids get up and head to the school bus stop on Tuesday morning, snow and winter weather and everything else wrapping on up. But by Tuesday morning, we could be looking at wind chills easily in the single digits and even below zero in some locations for the Mid-South area. So we're talking about some dangerously cold weather as we get into the rest of the week. Not to mention also on top of all that, we actually have a reinforcing shot of cold air coming in. Not quite as cold, but it will keep temperatures in the 30s almost all throughout the rest of this next week. So not much of anything in the way of milder temperatures past about Monday. Enjoy those temperatures on Monday while they last because they are not going to be sticking around. Uh, anytime soon. My lovely and talented wife, Melissa, joining us from House Onik tonight. I uh, hope the dogs are all snuggled up and everything is going well with uh, Marlo the Shorty for this evening. And welcome to everybody else uh, checking on in for the uh, Mid-South area. Now we warm up a little bit. Another chance of some rain mixed with snow Thursday into Friday, but that one doesn't appear to be too much of any concern whatsoever. Uh, if you celebrate the day, of course, fake furry forecaster day is coming up next Saturday as we go toward the beginning portion of February. Of course, a true national holiday is coming up next next Tuesday. February 5th is National Weather Person's Day, so just throwing that out there for everybody to write that down on their calendars. We'll see temperatures again closer to normal out there, but some brutal cold temperatures heading our way and may just barely even get above freezing 
on Tuesday for a high temperature. That's about as good as it gets out there for right now. So some very cold air on the way, so plan ahead for that. And then getting back into the next several days, we're not seeing any severe weather. That's very good news because we are right now in the prime severe weather season for this area of the country for this time of the year. So no major storm systems showing up right now outside of what we have coming up for possible winter weather here. And that's going to be about all that we wind up with for the time being. So good news on that. Welcome to everybody tuning in for tonight from around the area. Lois Watson from Faulkner, Mississippi. Mickey, Tennessee. Bobby Doles, hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, welcome to the show and votes for and against snow all the way through the comments section. So thanks to everybody for voting whether or not you do or do not want our new winter storm coming on through. Friday, if I'm not mistaken, sunset from Tammy Parker Theobald. Thank you, Theobald. Thank you very much uh, for that one for a beautiful view in and around the Memphis area. James R. Gulledge, a nice quad shot of sunset with a few clouds around Friday, a cold way to end the week in Humboldt, Tennessee. Thank you very much for that one. Tommy Ryan, that's Tommy Lee, 37476497 on Twitter, gave us a nice sunrise shot from this morning. Didn't catch a location, but thank you very much for that one. And Tina Korean, hope I'm saying that one right, uh, TLC underscore 1212 on Twitter. Nice view of some of that collected snow around Corinth, Mississippi for this morning as the dogs went out for their, to stretch their legs from early on. Got weather pictures? We'd love to see them. And that's just a small sampling out there. Keep it tuned to our social media channels. We'll keep you updated on what people are sending in. And thank you for sending in all those pictures. Uh, great to have them along to see what you're seeing out there. And again, stay tuned to my social media channels and we'll be posting them on there over the next several days and weeks. Again, the more people that can attend a Skywarn spotter class and get trained in severe weather, what to look for before and during the storm and what to do after the storm, these are key components of learning about Skywarn from the National Weather Service. So again, these will be taught by National Weather Service meteorologists and personnel. The first about dozen meetings have been announced by the National Weather Service in Memphis. The first one will be, the first two will actually be on Tuesday, February 19th, one in Senatobia, one in Boonville, Mississippi. And the next one after that will be on Thursday, the couple of days afterwards in Henning, Tennessee, right after that in Pontotoc, Mississippi. So if you'd like to see the complete list and about what's closest to you so you can attend one of these meetings and learn more about severe weather, they're totally free. They're open to anybody who wants to learn about severe weather because the more people we have with eyes and ears and brains on the storm to watch what's happening, the safer we are all going to be. Your information could save a life. Just for example, let's just say you're in Olive Branch and you see something in a storm going on, whether it's a funnel cloud dropping down toward the ground, baseball-sized hail, massive wind damage. That information can get sent back to the National Weather Service in Memphis. And that information, depending on which direction the storm is going, your information could help save life. So that's why these things are important. And that's why we talk about them whenever the National Weather Service issues these things. So please consider taking one of these courses. I've seen kids as young as about eight or nine take these courses. That right here gives kids a little bit more control over what feels to be a totally uncontrollable situation. So again, this could be some good news for the kids out there that get really worried at this time of the year, that what they can do ahead of time to get ready for the storm. Really good idea to help uh, your neighbors by staying in co contact with the National Weather Service. And this is one of the best ways to do that. More on our websites, or you can go to their website, weather.gov slash MEG. That's the three-letter designator for the National Weather Service in Memphis. Or just go to weather.gov, click on the Mid-South area on the map, and it'll take you directly to it. Easy, no problem whatsoever on that. That'll wrap it up for this edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime, for early on Saturday evening. And again, a lot more changes coming our way as we go throughout the next several days with this next winter storm system coming on through. We'll have details on your forecast, of course, coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. And, of course, yours truly will be on with your forecast update bright and early 
on News Channel 3 Daybreak. That starts at 6 o'clock Sunday morning, so stay tuned for more on that. Thanks to everybody for the weather reports. We're checking in from across the area for the kind words out there for right now. And, of course, we'll have more on the possibility of snow in the Mid-South coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10, so be sure to join us for that. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thank you for tuning in for our exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime, and stick around for a lot more with News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the weekend on air and online. Thanks for joining us.